I want to share with you three reasons why I think RedTrack is the number one ad tracking solution for every affiliate that runs paid ads. So let's jump into the screen. So I'm on my laptop today and you can see right away, I'm inside a campaign. This is yesterday's data. It was a good day. We did, I think, um, just short of $4,000 in revenue, giving us a little over $1,000 profit, $1,127 profit in this campaign. That's a solid day. We're not quite at scale. We're still sort of, you know, sort of in that proving ground where, you know, we're, we're spending a little bit of money and for some people that might be a, a good chunk of money, but it isn't um, at full scale just yet. I, I want to try and optimize this a little more. So not only are you going to hear the three reasons why Red Track is a number one, you're also going to actually see how I'm running this particular campaign. And I run campaigns different from ad account to ad account. It really depends on what I find works in that ad account. There's no one set rule. What I find, and in my opinion, and I know other people out there have different opinions and they have the same rule and framework and set up every single time. For me, I find different things and different setups work differently in different accounts. So I'm going to use whatever works best in that account. And if that means it's not my usual setup, then that, it's not going to be the usual setup, right? N reason number one, okay? Reason number one that I think Red Track is just by far superior, and I've used a lot of tracking solutions. I'm not going to mention names, but I've used a lot. So I do have a bit of experience. Red Track is, I know, and I know most tracking tools out there also have this ability, some to a decent level or maybe an equivalent level of Red Track, but some nowhere near the level of red track and that is to be able to dive deep into the data so by that i mean to be able to go into your campaign and really get busy and have a look and see exactly what's working where it's working what's converting where's the lowest cpa where's the highest roi what time of day what landing page is working best what offers working best etc etc right all able to do that multiple ways right so if we're in red track we're in this campaign right now I can go to grouping and I have basically five different filters or drop downs that I can select. Now you can see right now I have campaign, ad set and ad selected, which is what you see here. If I was to scroll to the left and do a quick drop down here and a drop down there, you could see campaign, ad set, ads, right? And we can see which ads are performing, which are bringing the sales in. So if I go back to grouping, well, maybe we don't want to play around with that. Maybe we want to say, all right, well, tell me which ads are working with iOS or, or which operating service. So if we were to scroll down to OS, which is here, OS type, and then if we were to say, well, I want to know what ads are working. I could have just X'd it out, but I didn't. Then apply. Well, now we see a completely different thing, right? Now we're seeing the OS type as a standard, right? As an overview. So we can see over, you know, iOS, let's stack it up by cost. Yesterday, I, Android spent the most, followed closely by iOS. Let's have a look and see as an overview. Very similar EPC, two cent difference. Landing page click-through rate, that's interesting, right? That there's, you know, not a huge difference, but you know, a decent difference. 8% is pretty, um, a pretty big difference, I guess. Earning per landing page click, Android is by, you know, 36%, 15% higher or whatever, $2.36, so 36 cents higher, I should say. Um, slightly lower cost or $7 lower CPA yesterday. Slightly lower conversion rate, which is interesting. And then there's the profit. So again, 28%. Now, you know, on this level of spend, I'll take it, but it's not great, right? 28% or 20% with iOS. Again, I'll take it, right? But at a higher level of spend, say if I'm spending, you know, 20K and I'm doing 28% or even 20%, I'm actually pretty happy about that, right? If I spend $20,000 in a day and I make 20% ROI, that's $4,000 profit. Who's grumbling at that? right? I know people want the 100% ROI. They want to have the double, the treble, 400% ROI, but that's unrealistic and especially at scale, right? Yeah, you're going to have the odd campaign or the odd ad that spent $50 and it's made a $500 sale and you have a, you know, a thousand percent ROI. But come back to me when you spent $5,000 on that ad and let's see if that still holds the same, right? 
$20,000 a day, complete different ball game to spending $200 a day, right? Yeah, you might have a super high ROI down there, but you know, $200 to make 100% ROI, well done, you made $200 profit, that's insane, that's great. $20,000 a day to make 20% ROI, I'm taking $4,000 profit to the bank. A tangent, tangent Tom is what they call me. Um, all right, so uh, yeah, anyway, we're, we're having a look at the deep dive, <laughs> deep dive into the data. Well, let's have a look what works with Android, what ads were crushing. So look, we see here right away, we've got the ID, we see it spent 393, how many conversions did it get? It got six conversions, $65. 1.14 conversion rate. Now we can see what ads looked good, right? There's another 1026 down here, right? Another one here, another one there. 005, batch eight, did well with $57. Not a huge amount of spend, so it's not something I'd really look at, but I would look here, right? Okay, is Android worth? And again, I wouldn't just go off one day's worth of data, and I probably wouldn't go off like five or six conversions, but if Android, you know, with this 1026 ad, has, you know, 50 conversions at a super good CPA, super high ROI or, you know, a good ROI, then now I'm going to take notice. Well, is it maybe worth splitting Android out and solely running this ad to Android? Depending on what it looks like on other sources, right? On other OS. We don't know if iOS may have crushed with that ad. There's the exact same ad. It's not crushed as well, right? It's not as green. So that's interesting. Okay, now I'm gonna, you know, I could spend all day taking you through all the different data deep dives that we could do in Red Track. I don't wanna do that. What I will show you and tell you is my, um, my favorite hack, not hack, my favorite deep dive, not even a deep dive, just my favorite, you know, data point, And really one that I optimize heavily off of is the hour of day. So if we look at the hour of day, what it's gonna tell us is, how well each hour in this ad account, and this is the ad account time zone, by the way, performed. So let's stack it up so it's ascending. So like this is midnight running through. And obviously again, like I would not make any decisions based off one day's worth of data. If I'm making decisions based off of hour of day, ideally I'm looking for at least two, maybe three weeks worth of data and at least 100 plus conversions probably that's too low. 200 plus conversions would be more in line with what I'd want to be. The more data we have, the more accurate the data, okay? So we can see, let's pretend we do have two weeks worth of data and we can see here, we have, you know, this midnight till 5 a.m. of nothing, right? And let's just pretend that we have, you know, several hundred dollars spent in each of these hours, which we don't, but let's pretend we do. Then I would be like, well, you know, let's say it's $500 each hour that we've spent here. Then that's two and a half thousand dollars that we've spent between midnight and 5 a.m. that hasn't resulted in any conversion. So do I really want to run my ads in that window? No. 5 a.m., 6 a.m., we get sales, but then we've got 7 a.m., which is negative, 8 a.m., which is, you know, slightly negative. Then we've got 9 a.m., which turns well, okay? We get this, you know, Profit, 9, 10, 11, 12, slightly negative at 1 p.m., but then 2, 3, 4, 5, profit, right? And heavy profit because of the dark green. So now we have this block. And depending on how, how, you know, how well you want to spread the budget, my favorite optimization is to basically day part. So I would ultimately only run my ads in the profitable time frame. Now, Personally, I would probably go for 9 a.m. till 5 p.m., okay? So ads on, 9 a.m., ads off, 5 p.m. And you can do this one of three ways, okay? The first way and the easiest way is to do a lifetime budget on the campaign or ad set level where you then set your ads to run by schedule and then just set your times that you want the ads to run, okay? That's number one, that's the easiest way. Number two is you could manually come in and turn on or off the ads or campaign at those said times. Now, I'm not a massive fan of doing that just because I find sometimes the campaign doesn't always come back to the way you wanted it to. It sort of resets it a little bit. And it, I've seen a lot of people say when they turn things off and on, it can have detrimental effect. Sometimes it works great. In fact, sometimes turning a campaign off when it's terrible 
and turning it back on the next day can absolutely crush. I don't know why, but if you were to do this consistently, I'd prefer not to do this way. Now, the third way and the favorite way of mine is to use manual bids. Either bid cap or cost cap, doesn't really matter. And the way I like to do this is when it comes to my block, my time window, 9 a.m., let's say, I raise my bids, okay? So my bids maybe double my CPA to make sure we get lots of traffic in that time window. And then when it comes to 5 p.m., I reduce my bid and I reduce it so low that I'm only going to get, a, you know, a trickle of traffic, hardly anything. So basically, I'm ultimately throttling my traffic in those time frames through manual bid without having to turn anything on or off, without having to day part with ad schedules, okay? This is my favorite way because what I can do is during my time, the, the, you know, the block of time that I want to run heavy in, I can really boost my bid. Basically, I can bully people out of the auction in that time frame so I can get optimum results and then I reduce my bid to a trickle and that's what I found to be my favorite personal method. All right, we're still in reason one, okay? So enough of the deep, you know, the data deep dive. Let's move on. Reason number two is the flawless accuracy in having your Facebook conversion API synced with your Facebook ad account directly from RedTrack. Literally within two or three clicks and just a couple of minutes, you can be synced with your ad account. Any conversions that come into RedTrack will then post back to Facebook directly into the ad account. And up to now, I am probably sitting at around 98, maybe 99% accuracy, meaning that if I have five conversions here, on this campaign, I see the five conversions in Facebook and usually very, very quickly, as in within 15 to 20 minutes. Sometimes there's maybe a delay, but usually super fast. Now that is paramount. It's paramount to not only have accuracy inside your Facebook ad account, so Facebook knows which ads, which campaigns, which timeframes, which audiences are bringing in conversions, but it's also paramount that they have the ability to be able to optimize. So Facebook needs that data to optimize, right? So if we don't have accurate data in our ad account, how can Facebook optimize accurately, right? And you'll see this if you've ever experienced a discrepancy in Facebook conversion data in your ad account. Let's say, I mean, at times I've seen it as bad as like 40% of conversions seeing, you know, making it into the ad account, which means you've got 60% of conversions that aren't being attributed inside your Facebook ad account. By the way, this was not when I was using RedTrack. This was a different tracking tool. Well, if that's the case, and sometimes zero, like there's no conversions making it back despite the so-called you know, conversion API tool that this other tracking tool had. Well, now if you don't have all of your data in Facebook, you know, in the ad account, your conversion data, and let's say 50% of the data is missing, meaning 50% of conversions are not showing up in your ad account. Well, now your CPA inside your ad account is just doubled. So let's say your average CPA in the ad account was actually $100 if all the data was there, right? That's what you're paying to get a sale. Well, now, because only 50% of conversions are being attributed, your actual CPA inside the ad account is showing as $200, right? It's 100% increase because there's only 50% of conversions, which now means that Facebook cannot bid in those auctions if you are manual bidding and your bid is $100 because that's what I'm paying. Well, now Facebook needs at least $200 bid to actually see you know, get some data and, and try and actually get a sale for you, right? Hopefully that makes sense. Now, reason number three, and one of my favorite reasons is the ability to manage your Facebook ad campaign directly inside RedTrack. Now, there's limitations to this, but I cannot tell you or stress to you how beneficial and useful this is. Like if, you know, you can go, so you can see here there's Ads Manager, so here we have, you know, yesterday inside the ads manager and I can turn on or off campaigns 
within red track from my mobile phone now this is perfect if i'm out and about and you know i'm nowhere near my computer for me i run a lot of things through ads power and um, some proxies and remote desktops so sometimes it's not always the most the ideal situation to be able to log in on my phone sometimes i need the desktop okay or my laptop which i don't always have if i'm out and about so to be able to just open it up in my phone and just turn off, toggle on or off a campaign or an ad set or an ad is absolutely insane. Now you can also increase budgets directly inside RedTrack, which is again, insane. And then as a bonus, the automated rules that RedTrack offer where you can increase budget depending on results without even touching the ad account. I'm not the biggest user of automated rules from within RedTrack, but the different features that they have inside RedTrack, the automated rules features, there are some insanely beneficial and awesome different features that you can do directly from RedTrack based on everything from increasing and decreasing budget, turning off ads if they hit a certain spend without any results, or even like optimizing landing pages. If you have different landing pages in your flow, you can send more traffic to one than the other and a whole different range of features that you can use. Awesome, awesome feature. So Red Track, again, hands down, the best tracking tool that I have used, full stop. It's my number one tracking tool now. I don't use anything else other than Red Track, and I highly recommend you use the same if you're running paid ads, if you're an affiliate. Now, if you do want to use Red Track and you don't already have an account, I do have an affiliate link in the description below. It will get you a free trial plus 50% off your first month. So if you're open to using it and you wanna take it for a whirl, super easy to set up. Again, like I said, conversion API, flawless. The ability to dive into the data, amazing. The UI is awesome as well. So many good things for RedTrack. All right, so before I wrap this up, I also wanna share with you that Ad Profits Academy is still in soft launch, which includes my A to Z affiliate course on how to become a super affiliate, running Facebook ads to ClickBank, BuyGoods, MaxWeb, Digistore offers, also a community and a whole host of other things. So click the link below if you're interested in joining the community and the Ad Profits Academy. It's $99 per month during soft launch. And if you upgrade to annual, which I highly recommend you do, it's $891, which is three months free, meaning you save $297 off the bat, but you also get access to my scaling masterclass, which includes some of the high level strategies and tactics I use to scale my business, not just through running ads, but through scaling my business, my affiliate business. So I highly recommend you check that out. Any questions, any feedback, leave a comment below and I'll see you in the next video.